doing a survey to see if we find live zebra mussels in the water attached to either plants or rocks or logs or something in the lake with uh, the discovery by a lake resident of some dead zebra mussel shells on his property, it makes us think that there are zebra mussels in here and we need to find the live ones to list the lake as infested. They're filter feeders. They, they suck in water and they strain out little particles. Um, they like algae, but they're straining out all sorts of, of suspended particles in the water. And if there's enough of them, they can actually remove enough of these particles yeah. to increase the water clarity. Yeah. And you know, and generally if you get an increase in water clarity, a lot of times you can have an increase in aquatic vegetation. That big? About yeah. that big is an average size zebra mussel. You get, you know, inch and three quarters, you got a trope. Okay. Now, they're an external spawner. You have the, the zebra mussels. They kick out the eggs and the gametes. These mix in the water, and the larval stage will just float around in the water for maybe up to two weeks while it develops enough of a shell, okay. and then it settles to the bottom. So it just it settles out wherever it happens to. Okay. Wherever it settles out, and if it's unsuitable habitat, it dies. It dies. Yep. And that's why they send out millions of eggs, right? Exactly. There are chemicals out there that will kill zebra mussels. They also kill fish. And the problem is, as you see this guy, he's sitting down here. He's on the bottom of the rock. So any chemical you put in has to go throughout the entire lake and has to get down to the bottom of the rocks where these things are living. And then the zebra mussel is a survivor. If it senses chemicals it doesn't like, a lot of times it just closes up its shell for a while. 